And now, it's time once again for the show that gives glorious voice to 25 million business owners across the fruited plain. Radio Free Enterprise with Frank Felker. Thank you, Dude Walker. Yes, indeed, I am Frank Felker. Welcome back to Radio Free Enterprise. Coming to you from the studios of Digital Media Positioning in beautiful and historic Alexandria, Virginia. My guest today is Charlie Weisinger, who's an estate planning attorney and recognized authority on the topic, who's recently written, written a book called Peace Through Planning. How are you doing today, Charlie? Doing great, Frank. How about yourself? Wonderful. I appreciate you joining me on the show today. You know, this is a, a very important topic that really affects everyone. I have had the opportunity to read your book, and we'll talk about your book a little bit later in the broadcast. But right now, I just want to ask you, just to lay the baseline, what exactly is estate planning and why do I need it? Well, frankly, Frank, estate planning is uh, is a, a putting a plan in place to take care of you in the case of your death or take, take care of your family and loved ones in the case of your death or um, also just as important taking care of you in the case that you become incapacitated um, in the future. It includes documents like powers of attorney, wills, um, and can include trust planning and, and those sorts of things there. Um, and to answer why it's important, well, it's important because if you don't have a plan in place, um, you can leave behind uh, chaos. And, and what, I've, what I've spent my career trying to work with people is help, helping them create a legacy of peace rather than leaving behind a, a bunch of chaos. Well, I can appreciate that and uh, I can understand why uh, peace is preferred over chaos. Um, let me ask you this now it you know you just mentioned a number of things uh, wills powers of attorney and so forth it sounds like there's a lot of moving parts and i can you know as i was reading your book and i'm thinking about myself and i don't currently have an estate plan put together so uh, i'm thinking now why don't i if it's so important it's one of the reasons because there's just so many moving parts it sounds so complex i'm not sure i can handle it i think that's a big part of it i think Obviously, nobody, uh, you know, if you read the, the back cover of the book, it's a, I said, I realize that no one wants to talk about death. Well, well almost no one. I, I've uh, been doing estate planning for long enough that it's become part of my daily vocabulary and, and such that even when uh, my wife, when we were pregnant with our first child, um, I brought up, the, you know, within 24 hours of her telling me that we were pregnant, I said, hey, we need to update our estate plan. She was not nearly as excited <laughs> as I was about that. Um, so it's just a topic that people don't want to talk about and don't want to think about, um, but they but it weighs them down because they know they have to that they need to put something in place at some point. And so, um, but then it does become overwhelming. I've known, um, I've had lots of clients over the years that have said, you know, we put we we bought software, we we tried to put the forms together ourselves, and we just never signed them. We never did anything with them. Uh, we we met with an attorney. You know, ten years ago, when we left, we 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 left that consult, you know, that consultation in tears and um, and with fighting, and we decided, you know, it's been ten years since we've decided to finally come back. Um, I've had other clients say it's just so confusing. Everybody's made it so confusing for them, and you know, so my my goal with writing this book and my goal in my practice in general has always been to help make this something that people can understand. That it's easy for them to understand they can get through it and and they can get it done quickly and then they can walk out without that weight on their shoulders i've, I've called myself in the past a professional weightlifter because somebody can come <laughs> in and walk down with their shoulders and when they leave our office they're walking you know they're standing straight up without that weight on their shoulders anymore i could picture in my mind's eye the person standing up with the weight coming off their shoulders uh would you say their overriding emotional reaction is relief I, I think so. I, I had a client, another client situation a few years ago, uh, where a husband had to basically drag his wife into the. He had, he had decided this was important for their family to do something, and she just did not want to talk about it. She did not want to come in to the appointment. She didn't know. You know they were a fairly young couple. They thought, she said, "Why are we having this conversation? I don't. We don't need to be here." And through throughout the meeting, uh, we, we kind of. We kind of uncovered that it was really just uncomfortable for her to talk about it. By the end of the meeting, she left, and she, uh, as she was leaving, she said, 
she looked at her husband and said, thank you so much for bringing me to this appointment. And she looked wow. at me and said, thank you for making it easy to understand. And I feel so much better knowing that we've put, that we're putting a plan together. Fantastic. That was a great illustration. Now, for people like me and maybe a lot of other people watching right now who haven't had the opportunity to sit down and, and uh, experience that feeling of relief, maybe one of the things on our mind that's keeping us from coming to the table and maybe that young wife as well is, you know, we don't want to confront our own mortality. We don't want to think about death. We don't want to think about our own death. And we don't want to think about things happening after we're gone. Is that something that you've seen people experience? And how can you help them get over that? And I, I think I think we all understand that at some point we're we're not going to be here anymore, uh, you know. And, and and so it's not you want to to focus on. And I I often you know I'll ask clients, well, what took you so long? Why are you know why are you not here? They say, well, I, I'm for years, or or some sometimes they're almost embarrassed that they're that you know that they're that they've put it off for so long. And I always laugh and I say, well, it's not too late until it's too late. Uh, but you know the, the reality is I think they just uh, I think some of it is fear some of it is fear of how expensive is this going to be how much you know how much time is this going to take and and we're, we've got a whole lot of really um, important and urgent things going on in our life that we sometimes put off things that we can you know it's easy to just shove that aside and forget about it but it's it's important you know I believe it's one of the most important things, one of the most important gifts you can give to your family, having a plan that gives them some peace. So what um, what do you tell people uh, when they ask, how long is it going to take and how much is it going to cost? I would imagine the costs vary from a case to case basis and the, the length of time right. as well. But can you give us any sort of uh, ideas how you answer those questions? Yeah, we typically answer that question by saying, we don't know exactly what it's going to cost until we've sat down and figured out what you need. We base our estate plans on the need of the clients and, and everybody's a little bit different. It's, it's kind of like asking me to build a house and, uh, and saying, how much is the house going to cost? Well, it depends. How many bedrooms do you have? How many are living in the house? What, what, you know, where is the house? What, what are, you know, and so with mm -hmm. an estate plan, it's the same thing. It's figuring out, okay, how many beneficiaries do you want to benefit? Is this your only marriage? Is this, you know, um, ha do you have children from previous relationships? Do you want, who do you want to benefit? How and, and kind of what are your goals? And so we sit down um, in our office, we've always offered a free consultation where we'll spend an hour to, to an hour and a half with a client and just really get to understand their needs. And, and then from there, we can, we can work with them on, on building out the plan for them. The typical time frame, we want to make it really easy in our office. And so our, our typical clients, they come in, we have that first meeting, that first consultation, and we usually have them back for a second appointment within two to three weeks, where at that time we can, uh, at that time we can have documents ready for them to review and possibly sign at, at the same time and just, and be, and have them have something that they thought was going to take so long and be so tedious and, and be done with it. That's great. That sounds like a, a great approach. You know, one thing I've heard people say about estate planning or why they're not going to engage with it is, oh, estate planning is only for the wealthy. What would your response be to a statement like that? Uh, my, my statement is, you know, just based on experience, estate planning is not just for the wealthy, it's for everyone. Um, and the main, one of the main reasons, you know, if a very wealthy estate can afford thousands of dollars in litigation fees to pay attorneys if they didn't if they didn't put a plan in place and there, you know there's there's more to go around you know, if you've got a small estate and you don't have a plan in place if you, and you have to go through uh, litigating it can be very very expensive uh, and you know and, and and that money instead of going to your beneficiaries can get eaten up really quickly you know we have we I've had a, a client story she had two children um, and but that she had recently adopted and then she passed away and the children were still teenagers and uh, we had to set up guardianship for both of those children and go through and in uh, what we call intestate probate which means the probate process when somebody dies without a will and by the time we're done with that we've spent 
many, many months and thousands of dollars on a very small estate where there could have been some, some money left for these children. We've gone, you know, it's, it's cost them so much by the time you pay multiple attorneys to go through the process that that could have been very simple had she had a, a even as a, just a simple estate plan in place. Yeah, that's an interesting, it's a sad story, but a good case study of why each of us should take the time and invest the time and money to get this done now, like you say, before it's too late. What about if someone feels they're too young to worry about estate planning? What, what would be your reaction to that? Uh, you know, we do estate plans uh, at, at different levels for, for different people. You know, some people that uh, the moment a child turns 18, they're no longer a child. And what, what that means to their parents is their parents no longer have the ability to make decisions for them, uh, that they no longer have the ability to make financial or medical. And so we have a lot of people who start at the day they turn 18 and they come in and they do a, a financial power of attorney and a medical power of attorney just so they can name uh, so that mom and dad or, or whoever they've chosen can continue to make those decisions. Uh, because you don't want to have a situation where your child is in and is injured or in an accident or something else and you can't decide on where they, you know, how they are taken care of and where they go. And so there's really no no age that's too, I mean, once, you, once you've turned 18, it's important to have something of a plan in place. And especially as you get married and, and, uh, and have children, um, those things obviously it becomes more and more important at that time. I've also heard people say, well, I'm married and you know, if I were to die suddenly, my wife or my husband or my spouse partner uh, would get everything anyway, so I don't need to invest the time and money in this. I understand from reading your book that that's not the case. Could you speak to that? Yeah, that's that's actually one of the biggest myths that we that we face, and one of the biggest challenges that we face. I, I regularly teach a an estate planning course to realtors in San Antonio, and I and these are people who who know real estate, um, and they have gone through at least some study of you know in texas we're a community property state which means you know once we if you're married uh you know the, the property you have a 50 percent interest in all the property of your you, know, you and your spouse that you that you've gained during that marriage and so but i'll lay out a scenario and i'll ask them okay uh, husband and wife are married they've been married 20 years husband has a child from a previous relationship he passes away what happens to the community property and Without fail, uh, there will be 15 different answers coming from the room. Um, and I've had a couple of classes recently where nobody in the room got the answer correctly because they all assume, well, like, or many people assume, well, it all goes to spouse because it's her community property. They bought this house together. And in that scenario, the, the answer is no, it goes to husband's, his half goes to his children, not not his spouse. And wow. um, I see a lot of, I, I have to help a lot of people pick their jaw up off the floor when they realize <laughs> that, that it's that what I've said. And sometimes they don't believe me and I have to explain to them now, you know, the different scenarios. And so the reality is what you think is going to happen with your estate may not be what really happens. The only way to ensure that what you want to happen happens is to put it in writing, put a plan together. That's great advice, Charlie. And I think that's an excellent question, the way you put it to people. And I'll bet there are a lot of jaws that hit the floor. Uh, I mean, I sort of chuckled at that, but I bet it wasn't too darn funny for those people. So another good reason why I plan ahead. Now, I wanted to move to talk about your book, Peace Through Planning. And uh, the subtitle is The Eight Truths You Need to Know About Estate Planning. We don't have time to go through all eight, but I did want to touch on three of them. The first one I want to speak to is your truth number one, which is a good plan is one that you understand. I, that's pretty straightforward, but what uh, what are you trying to tell us there? In my career, I've been doing this a little over 10 years now, and I've I've met with clients who have who I'm not their first attorney. They come in with a with an estate plan that was done in many you know done several years ago. Um, sometimes the, the plan is hundreds of pages long, and we look at the documents. And before I before I look at any documents, I'll ask them, "What does this plan do? What what, what do you have here? What 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 is the plan written?" And they say, "I I don't know. I don't remember. 
I, I don't understand it. And so I'll, I'll say, well, have you read it? And I'll open the document and I'll start reading it. And I'll understand very quickly that it's going to take me a while to figure it out because it's complex uh, and, and sometimes unnecessarily so. Now, there are, there are obviously times when it's really important to have a complex plan. But if you don't understand what you've created and what you've signed, then it's uh, then it doesn't really do. You don't know that it's doing what you want it to. I, I tell a story in the book of a of a client who who came in and I and I noticed some red flags pretty fast. And I said, okay, you've got a plan done recently. Why are you here? And as she said, well, this is the plan my daughter's attorney created for me. Oh boy! And I said, well, what do you what do you mean your daughter's attorney? You know this your estate plan is for you. And she says, well, they, they told me that this, that I needed a plan. And so I signed this one and I, and uh, I said, well, do you understand what it says or what it does? No, not really. So, okay. Well then we need to start over and you need to, you need, it's most important that you have that plan that, that all the documents that you're signing, that you really understand it. If you don't, you need somebody that can explain it to you. And if the person, if the attorney that you're sitting with can't explain it to you in a way that you understand, then, run, go somewhere else. <laughs> well, and that brings us to truth number two, which is like and trust your attorney or choose someone else. So I, I heard what you're saying right there. But uh, what maybe what if somebody felt trapped, like I've started down this path with this attorney, how can I choose someone else? Yeah, it, it's easy, you, you, you open the door and you walk out. <laughs> and, and you go and you find somebody else that, that you trust. You know, if you and I, and I and I'm saying that somewhat facetiously, I understand the, the difficulty there. And I, and I tell the story in the book of uh, a related situation, but it was my grandmother going to a doctor's office. And uh, in, in her first visit with this doctor, uh, who, who obviously had horrible bedside manner, you know, she he uh, was examining her and he stated, oh, my, that's a big belly. And, uh, and nice. it embarrassed my grandmother to, to the to the fact that the next time that she became ill or sick, she did not want to go to the doctor. She she did not have a trust for him. She didn't like him. She didn't want to be there. And uh, and in fact, when my dad had to force her to go into the, to the hospital the next time or to the doctor when she became very very ill. And uh, and it's the same kind of thing with. If you don't like the attorney that you're talking to, if you don't, uh, if you don't have a trust for him, if you don't have rapport, you're not going to open up and tell him everything that you need to know. He needs to know about your finances. He needs to know about your um, your family dynamics. He needs to know a lot of, uh, of very personal details that we don't like sharing with anybody. And so, um, if you immediately don't don't like him. And, and go somewhere else, and if you, and especially if you don't have, a, if you don't trust them, it's, it's important to do business uh, with, with, you know, with an attorney that you like and, and trust. The fourth, uh, or your truth number four, and the last one I'd like to touch on today, is that you say no one will care for your kids the way you do, but you can still make the best available choice. Tell us what you mean by that, please. Um, I, I, so, the, in all the reading that I've done and all the statistics that I've seen, the number one reason people don't put an estate plan in place is they can't decide on who's going to take care of the children. Uh, maybe it's, you know, husband has one idea and wife has another idea, or, uh, or maybe it's, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, a lot of times I hear it's, I, I, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And so mm. we think that, that this person is probably the best but we're gonna hurt my mom's feelings if we don't name her. And we don't, so we just don't name anything, anyone. Well, the reality is that if you, if you pass away without having a plan in place, and, uh, and then, then you're leaving it up to the state to decide who's going to raise your children. And a lot of times they will choose the person who picks the children up first because it's a whole lot easier for a court to kind of keep the status quo than it is to remove the children from one home and place it in another if they don't have some very compelling evidence to do that. And so having a written plan helps you help, helps you have that person that's, that knows that they're responsible for taking care of the child. The rest of the family can rally around your children. Uh, everybody can and can provide you know, somewhat of a peaceful, 
environment for them to grieve and heal instead of instead of I just lost they just lost their parents and now they're being dra dragged through a court battle and so uh, there's nobody there's nobody perfect out there that's going to raise your children exactly the way you do but it's important to just find the person with the best with the values closest to what you have and then share with them what you what your values are and what you want for your children and just get the you know make the decision because if you don't make the decision somebody else is going to make it and you're probably it's probably not the decision you would have made probably not well charlie weisinger you've shared so much information with us today if somebody wanted to get additional information about your practice or your book what's uh, where's the best place for them to search Um, they can they, they can give us a call uh, at, <laughs> at, our, at our office here in San Antonio, Texas, 210-308-0800. Um, but they, they can also go online to peacethroughplanning.com. Peacethroughplanning.com will get them information directly to about, about our firm and the book as well. Anyone can benefit from your book, Peace Through Planning. And I can tell you, having read it myself, I really want to compliment you on sort of the, the plain spoken common sense language that you use. It's not a lot of lawyeries. You put a lot of great uh, graphics in there that visually demonstrate how things work together. And uh, I appreciate all the time and the effort that you put into that. We're just about out of time. Is there any last point question I haven't asked you or something that's come to mind that you'd like to share before we go? I'd say just on the, on the comment on the legalese, my, as I was writing this book, my wife reminded me multiple times that nobody wanted to read a really long, boring book <laughs> on estate planning. And so I, I made it my goal to make sure that I did tell stories in there. And then I kept it in simple terms so that it, that it could be something that, that, was a, that is a fairly quick read, and it, it, but it's enjoyable. You'll have some, some stories, and, and I think you will learn something and, um, that, you can, that people can take away. And so I, I appreciate your time. and the opportunity to speak here with you. Thank you so much for joining me today, Charlie. Thanks again to Charlie Weisinger and thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is Frank Felker saying, I'll see you on the radio.